are you doing? <laughs> it's Professor Pumpernickel here again for the third video in the Eureka series. Thank you for watching all my previous videos. Well, we're still here in the lockdown, so why not create a third video? This one is all about colour. In the first video, we looked at my spiral illusion, yes? And we also looked at the Thaumatrope toy, the Victorian curiosity. I hope you've all had a go at that. And then in the, uh, the, the second video, we looked at the, uh, the, the evolution of flash photography and the creation of light. Well, before we get any deeper, can I just say a big thank you to all of my friends at Eureka for posting their videos. I have had such a great time watching and being inspired and feeling very positive about things. Um, Ian's a storyteller has been telling us some beautiful stories. I almost had a tear in my eye at one of them. We have Gakko with his fantastic, uplifting songs and ballads. And we have all of the people at the Eureka Play team who have been creating their videos at home for us too. Get yourselves nice and comfortable. It's going to be quite an experience. We live in a world of color. Limitless in its variety of shades and hues, from the subtle to the striking, and all that lies between and beyond. But what is colour? What is red, blue, green and yellow? And how do our eyes see what they see? To understand this question, we must first look up to the brightest star in our sky, the sun. Our sun is one big gigantic chemical factory. It is so enormous, we could fit 1.3 million of our Earths inside of it. Every second of every day, at its core, 620 million tons of hydrogen gas is fused into a brand new chemical. And this chemical is called helium. This process is called nuclear fusion, and it is what makes our sun shine hot and bright. This hot, bright light is called radiation, and if it was not for our amazing planet's protective magnetic force field, the sun's radiation would be far too deadly for life to exist here. But here we are, so thank you, Mother Earth. The human eye is an incredible piece of engineering, but it is also very limited. We can only see less than 1% of our sun's radiation, this tiny portion of radiation we call visible light. Chris from Eureka talks about this in his video all about infrared light, because you see, we cannot see beyond the colour red. Beyond the colour red, you are talking about infrared. And Chris shows you his infrared camera. But nor can we see beyond the colour violet. There you are looking into the ultraviolet. And that is somewhere we cannot go with our eyes. But I have a friend who can. And that was the honeybee in my previous video. Pollinating insects see beyond our own eyes and into the ultraviolet spectrum. A seemingly normal flower becomes something much more when it's seen in ultraviolet light. These markings are there on the flower to guide the bees and the pollinating insects to the nectar and the pollen. Something our own eyes are blind to. But this video is about the colours we can see. In the 17th century, Isaac Newton discovered white light from the sun can be split into several colours by shining a narrow beam from a gap in his window and through a glass prism. He proved that all of these colours make white light. So now it's time for you to try an experiment or two all of your own. Here's what you need for your first experiment. You need some white flowers. 
Here I'm using white roses, but you can use any white flower. Just go ahead and experiment. Colored sweets. Here I am using Skittles and M&Ms. I find these to work the best. Plastic cups or glasses. A spoon and some water. What you need to do now is sort your sweets into groups of color. All the reds in one cup, all the greens in another cup and so on. Add water to that so it just covers the sweets with roughly one centimeter of water. A little more will do but not too much. Stir with the spoon until all of the dye from the coated sweets dissolves into the water. Do not leave your sweets in for too long. They will begin to dissolve fully into the water and your flowers will not like that at all. Plus, you may want to eat your sweets later on. Now you should have several cups of brightly coloured water. Pop a flower or two into each cup and place on a sunny windowsill for a few days. When your flowers become thirsty, they will drink the water all the way into the petals. A magical transformation will occur, but you must be patient. The warmer and breezier the conditions, the thirstier your flowers will be, and the more colourful they will become. So, those of you who have seen my live shows before at Eureka and met me in person, you will recognise this next demonstration. I call it, in the show, I call it the We Into Poo experiment which always gets a bit of a giggle. But if you've seen the show before, you will know that it isn't we and poo. This is a really old science demonstration. It's called the iodine clock. And we take two clear colorless liquids and we mix them together. They look like water. And after a few seconds, the liquid changes to black. Now this is going to help me explain colour. You see, the light will usually pass through the clear liquids, but when the reaction happens and the chemicals change, the new chemical absorbs all of the light. It absorbs it like a sponge, and none of the light can pass through it any longer and no light can be reflected. We see only the absence of light we see blackness. So in this video we've got two experiments and here's the second one. You're going to need a paper plate or cardboard, coloured pens or paint, a compass or circular object to draw around, scissors and a grown-up to help you with the scissors and some string. Create a circle with the compass or draw around a small plate. Cut this out and mark the center point. Then divide the circle into at least six equal segments and color each of the segments starting from red through to purple. Then mark two dots about two centimeters away from the center point and punch holes where the dots are. You're going to thread your string through these holes and when you've done that You've made your Newton's disc. So here's my wheel, my Isaac Newton rainbow wheel, and my string is through the middle, through the two holes. What we need to do is just straighten that out a little bit. We're going to give it a spin, give it a little spin like this. You want that string to start to twist. You want the strings to twist so it gets nice and tight. Now don't worry if your wheel sort of falls flat like this, just straighten it up a little bit. There we go, straighten it up a little bit, keep twisting, and there. Now, sorry, now pull the string tightly. It should start to spin. Let it coil up in the opposite direction and give it another spin. Loosen off the tension, let it spin in the opposite direction, and give it another pull, another pull. Let it spin again and tighten in the other direction and pull. Release, nice and gently, and pull again. 
you'll see that it begins to pick up speed. You can hear the sound of it whirring. Isn't that amazing? Right, so you want to keep on rotating this wheel and take a look at it. Your eyes, due to that persistence of vision again, cannot keep track of all of those colours. They all start to blend into one colour. That one colour is quite close to white light. Now, hold on a moment. I know what you guys are thinking. Sat there at home, watching this on the computer screen, you're saying, no way! That wheel, when it's rotating, doesn't look white to me. Well, I'll tell you why that is very quickly. You see, you're watching it through a computer screen, and a computer screen flickers on and off really fast, around about 30 times every single second, and that's interfering with the experience. So I encourage you to make one and watch it with your naked eye and you will see a big difference. So let's think about what colour is then. Let's wrap this up. The sunlight coming through the window is bouncing back, being reflected back off the coloured wheel into our eyes. And each one of those coloured segments absorbs a different quantity of the sun's light. But it doesn't absorb all of it. Some of it is reflected back to you. And each colour reflects back a different frequency of light. So, when you see an object, what you are seeing is the sun's light is being absorbed and the remainder of that sun's light is being reflected back to you in a particular frequency. And that is what colour is. Uh, just before I leave, Hey, look, look at my flowers here. Can you can you see that? Can you see what's happening here? Look at this beautiful color change. I've got some green coming on here. Can you see that? Some green coming on there. Beautiful. We've got some uh, purplish blue happening here, and we've got a beautiful pink here. Yeah, these these were white roses when we started. Remember? So until next week, where we discuss the topic of sound and some amazing experiments you can try at home. I'm going to disappear and take these nice coloured flowers to uh, Mrs Pumpernickel. Until next week, stay safe, have fun, and goodbye for now. Cheerio!